All right, so we got um, Forsaken Castle by Duck Block mm -hmm. Games, mm -hmm. and I need to plug my controller in. See the the meme of me seeing that there's controller support and then testing it, and then there's not controller support for PS4 mm -hmm. is a little played out. So I had the genius idea of just testing it beforehand, and uh, nice. lo and behold, it does work. Nice. I don't suppose you're using controller. Nah, I'm too lazy. I'm just going to keyboard and mouse <laughs> it up. Wow, bro. I noticed the game has settings, but uh, you can't go to them. You can only adjust the controls. I guess that's uh, all right since, well, I don't know. Did this game have that Unity player pop up? Um, I don't think so. Not that I remember. Hmm. Well, that's all right. It looks uh, perfectly fine on my end. So let's uh, begin. Alright, let's do it. Um, so this is the castle the villagers spoke of. Time to hunt down those undead. So we are the paladin Lily uh, on a quest to do something or other. <laughs> Seems like that, yeah. Yeah, why is there so much uh, space to the left of you? <laughs> you think they would have started you out over there. I guess they want to show you where you're eventually going to be trying to go, but then they got to find a way in there first. So they have you find it on your own. Mm. Classic game design <laughs> 101 right there. Yeah, this is, uh, well, that's what they advertise, a uh, 16-bit. Yo, fuck the slime. <laughs> it's right there. 16-bit <laughs> Metroidvania adventure action awesomeness poggers. Which uh, I can dig as a fan of 16 bit Metroidvanias. Were there any 16 bit Metroidvanias like for the SNES? I mean, if you count Super Metroid, which you may or may not, depending on your your uh, definition of the term. <laughs> it's just a Metroid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to get, you know, pedantic or, or technical <laughs> or whatever. But, I mean, yeah. They had Super Metroid, and I can't really... There may be some other ones that, you know, could be considered such, but I really don't uh, know any any offhand. Well, uh, what about Earthbound? Oh, yeah, totally. I guess it's... <laughs> it does have some groovy tunes. I do like the music. Yeah. Really good music, really good graphics. Although, like, kind of a personal preference thing, but but uh, this lightning is loud as fuck. <laughs> One and uh, <laughs> two. I saw screenshots of their earlier um, demo, and I kind of like that look better because uh, to me it was more faithful to 16-bit and didn't have these fancy lighting effects and stuff. And, and it's not just like a couple lighting effects. There's like got green lights and blue lights and green jellies that light up, and and the lights are kind of off the charts in this game. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you. Uh, I, I didn't see the one you're talking about, but I do like it when games just you know do everything uh, at the pixel art level as opposed to relying on modern lighting systems that are available. I just played Lama Lana, so I'm whipping out all the walls and everything. <laughs> One thing I'm not a fan of is uh, no downward whipping. Oh my god. No upward whipping either, for that matter. I guess... I mean, maybe it's just really hard to do. Or, you know, people don't like it necessarily from Super Castlevania 4, but... Man. It sure <laughs> is nice. <laughs> be able to whip in any direction you want yeah like i don't even need the like super diagonal and eight way and letting it flail <laughs> around and shit like at least up and down is nice yes for sure <laughs> it's just so weird why that's so taboo among castlevania games and games that try to be castlevania the controls here are solid i just wish uh they are little yeah. more uh, freedom as you say with the whip it would be it would be a nice feature for sure 
And I like this uh, grabbing onto walls thing. It's pretty neat. It is, yeah. It's something you don't see in... Well, I'm sure some Metroidvanias do it, but mm -hmm. not the ones that I played. Oh, shit. <laughs> hmm. There's some secondary uh, weapon I'm not... No, I guess not. Or not yet, not at yet. least. Yeah, yeah. I did I did just find one. Because I, I do see your hearts represent your health this time, which is uh, pretty weird, bro. What kind of sense I mean, does that make? <laughs> yeah, it's like backwards if you're a Castlevania fan. <laughs> Oh, holy water. All right. <laughs> there you go. It appears the uh, the secondary item is on a cooldown instead of finding ammunition, which is uh, pretty neat. Or maybe not. I guess that doesn't let you stockpile up on hearts and then just go ham on a boss. <laughs> I thought about this earlier, about the idle animation, the... Uh, Lily has mm -hmm. and I like it it's got a nice bounce to it but like what the hell sense does it make you're just like bobbing up and down and letting your no, arms you're, flow <laughs> you're, not, you're not wrong if you think about it but that I mean that's what I would expect from an idle animation when you have so few pixels to work with mm -hmm. you want to you want to show off you know some kind of bare minimum of like movement or breathing or something or something yeah. that's going to make your character seem like they're ready for action as opposed to, like, frozen in place. <laughs> yeah, the alternative is to just stand there and blink occasionally and... Uh, exactly, yeah, yeah. Maybe your chest expands and contracts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it reads as, uh, you know, I'm idle and and ready and, and breathing. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to what it should read as, where it's like, I'm, like, convulsing or... You know. <laughs> shaking in a rhythmic fashion yeah but it just makes sense in a video game yeah it's one of those video game things for sure it's kind of nice that uh the demo is updated as the the game is updated because sometimes i see uh demos for games and the demo is leagues behind where the the game is Right. And personally, I feel like the demo should, like, if you can, it should be updated to uh, reflect the final product. Because then you're, like, false advertising yourself, I guess. <laughs> right, right. And it's just, a, it's just a nice little show of good faith. If you have, like, backers that you're trying to please, you know, like, hey, this is, this is all we have. We're not, we're not hiding anything from you. We're, we're trying to keep you guys up to date and everything. Yeah, especially if it's something like improved graphics or audio, which can pretty easily be swapped out in a game project. Uh -huh. Like, why not update the demo? Yeah. The only reason I would, like, not update it is if it's, like, maybe spoilery or something, or um, if it's not stable, like it crashes or something, or, you know, might not want to show that off yet. Yeah, I could see that. I do like that the tea bag is instantaneous. <laughs> Always welcome. That's a good point, yeah. You notice the uh the crouching idol? So it's like kinda similar, but <laughs> it's just kinda moving your arm a little bit, rotating your arm. Yeah, it's just the upper half of the standing idle animation, but slower. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, could be seen as lazy, but I see it as uh clever. <laughs> Because it's like nothing you would notice unless you're a perceptive person looking for something like that. Absolutely, yeah. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh, did I just jump through a thin platform? Oh, my God. Holy shit. Oh, that's shit. right. I did, I did notice that, too. Yeah, it's big ups to the uh, developers for <laughs> throwing that in. We, we do love to see that sort of thing. God. <laughs> now, if only you could crouch and move while yeah. not under uh, in a cave or something like that I'm surprised there's no uh, 
grandiose lighting effect when you save at these angel statues. Mm -hmm. Kind of seems like a missed opportunity since the devs seem to like their lighting effects. True, yeah. It could be something they're, they're planning to work on later, too. Yeah. Or at the very least, like a sound effect for some audio feedback. Yeah, yeah, some kind of effect. The, um, the one in uh, Symphony of the Night is always a probably one of the most awesome like saving effects I've ever seen where it's like early 3D polygonal coffin like forms itself <laughs> around you and spins around and then breaks apart yeah I'm familiar with it even though I haven't beaten the game yeah it's awesome yeah it's almost as cool as calling your dad die bad zombie <laughs> you don't belong in this world oh my god <laughs> <laughs> These are some pretty chill fucking jams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it does remind me of some of the Symphony of the Night songs, because it, it definitely has some very mellow tracks in uh, certain areas. Yeah, I guess when I jump into a Castlevania, like, the first level it usually has that, that music that's supposed to pump you up, you know? Get right. you uh, going. This, not so much, but it's still uh, really nice. Yeah, for sure. Chillvania. <laughs> <laughs> God, you know the controls are solid when I can uh, pull off hits and land on this uh, post. <laughs> and it's not a struggle. I'm collecting green, though. Is that... Uh... Money? Health? No. I don't know what any of these things are. <laughs> yeah, god, looking at your pause menu, you have so many fucking empty sockets, holy shit. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Oh god, and they're all items? Holy fuck. <laughs> Love the um the portrait of your character too. She looks a little like Sundari on that. <laughs> a little miffed. <laughs> yeah, like I don't I don't appreciate you looking at my items like that. <laughs> You know, if I recall correctly, that sprite is actually the uh, first version of the dialogue sprite. Uh-huh. And then the one used in dialogue is the new and improved one. Oh. That's pretty cool to see they still were able to use the old sprite in some way. Yeah, that is awesome. Ooh, sharp axe. Not just an axe, bro. It's a fucking sharp <laughs> axe. Holy... <laughs> You got a whip, you got holy water, you got an axe. Each item behaves pretty much exactly how you'd expect, given that this is a Castlevania-esque game. Mm -hmm. I, w I think I would like to see a little bit more creativity in terms of the uh, weapons. Make it something else, not holy water, you know? Or yeah. Something. Oh, damn. These red guys are fucked now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm collecting purple and green. What the hell are those? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Gamer intuition tells me there's something I should collect, but I don't know what benefit I'm reaping from them. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's stuff in a game. Why wouldn't you collect it? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you're right. Would you say uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is your favorite Castlevania? It's definitely my favorite to give a reference point of what you like Castlevania wise yeah exactly I haven't played um, quite a few of them though so I might be a little ignorant in my my uh, judgment calls well you know just maybe just not experienced yet bro you haven't played Castlevania judgment oh my god this dude I know how can I how can I properly <laughs> rate games if I haven't played judgment <laughs> Uh, Castlevania Adventures. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And then there's one called Belmont's Revenge on Game Boy as well. Well, that's a little more exciting of a title than Adventures. Yeah, true. It's only outdone by that uh, N64 game just called Castlevania. Like, yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, people did call it Castlevania 64, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, it was just, it was just Castlevania until they released Legacy of Darkness. Well, I guess my favorite is uh, Castlevania 4, but I think I've played fewer Castlevanias than you. Mm -hmm. 
but I don't think I need to because Super Castlevania 4 is the best Castlevania ever. It's not even a question. <laughs> you can really whip down, bro. There, no contest. Automatic yeah. win. Yeah, true. It's a fight for second place as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> dude has a lot of HP. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> this dude. Oh, are you fighting a boss or something? Um, I was fighting a guy that was pr previously presented as a boss. He's a regular enemy now. <laughs> God, I love that cliche. <laughs> I know, yeah. And you see that in Castlevania as well. Uh, I guess sometimes. Um, and it, it is, you know, it does seem like a Axe Armor, the, the enemy from Castlevania who throws axes in two uh, elevations up and down. Hmm. <laughs> Damn, this game is just a big fucking ripoff of Castlevania. <laughs> well, probably. <laughs> it's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh. No, sure. I mean, who doesn't want to play more Castlevania? I mean... <laughs> Someone who doesn't like Castlevania. <laughs> All right, yeah, fair enough. Oh, I see what you mean. I'm at the axe armor, dude. Yeah. It's tough. Use the holy water, in my opinion. Shit. Oh my god, I need a double jump, bruh. <laughs> Ooh, did it. Yeah. Oh, there's no orb, bruh. Wow, this game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now the music's a little more pumped up. A little more action-y. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Oh, fuck, I hate when I throw my axe and only hit one of these red fucks. <laughs> I know, it feels like a waste. Oh my fucking god. Oh shit. Some of these parts make me feel like you do get a a double jump at some point. Mm hmm I would not be surprised at all. Mm hmm Well do Castlevania games have a double jump? I don't think uh, they do. <laughs> Symphony did. I can't speak for the other ones. I can't remember if Circle of the Moon did or not. Holy shit, oh my god. Oh. Always skeletons, bruh. Fucking skeletons, damn, bruh. <laughs> Human skeletons, dinosaur skeletons, Jesus. What's next? <laughs> A different type of skeleton? <laughs> Oh shit, I'm fighting the boss, but it's not a boss. <laughs> I know, yeah. And he, he, it seems like he has just as much health as he does when he's a boss. Like, come on. Yeah, I just walked mm -hmm. away. <laughs> Give me a break here. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> also, no uh, powering up your whip with uh, found items. Oh, true, yeah. Another, uh,. Difference I noticed from Castlevania. Um, but uh, fuck, should we talk about it now? <laughs> uh, I suppose. <laughs> this game had a Kickstarter. I think you were uh, aware of that. <laughs> I was, yeah. And, uh, from what I researched, it kind of sounds like it's, uh, gone downhill since it started. Sounds like it definitely went through some stuff, had some issues. Yeah, so way back in 17, this game uh, started its Kickstarter campaign. And uh, it was quite successful, raising mm -hmm. uh, some 30... Oh, there we go. $35,000 of its uh, $10,000 funding goal. But God damn it, they had the stretch goals that I don't like, where it's... Things that you would just expect in a video game. I think the very first one was New Game Plus. Uh -huh. And to me, I feel like if, if this is a game worth its salt that's gonna, you know, compete with the big boys on Switch eShop and PS4, PSN store and stuff. Like a New Game Plus, bro, that's just a given for your game. True. And uh, a boss, boss rush mode for, uh, I think it was the 
$20,000 goal or $12,000, one of those, but... Fuck that, bro. I'll make your boss rush mode for half of that. <laughs> <laughs> but then there are some goals that are out of the way stuff, for lack of a better term, like uh, different characters and, and playing as those different characters. Okay, I could see those as stretch goals. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, you know, something like big head mode or a different costume, that, that should just be in your game. <laughs> I don't think that's yeah. being entitled gamer to say that. <laughs> no. No. But uh, unfortunately, the there were, I think, two stretch goals which weren't reached, which uh, always makes me sad to see unreached stretch goals. Yep. Like, just the graphic is just <laughs> sad <laughs> to see them yeah. not unlocked. Maybe that's intentional. It's like a psychology thing. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... You know, it's more of just a side effect because the stretch goals are supposed to be there to excite people and get them to say, "Oh, hell yeah, I want to donate and, and push push this over the line and get some more features for this cool game." But yeah. uh, you know, they, they don't always work. I mean, you don't always get all the stretch goals. So, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, especially when your stretch goal's two hundred thousand. It wasn't two hundred thousand, but. Oh. <laughs> You know damn well some video games done it somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But it was not this game. Mm. Cool, I got some jewels. I don't know what they fucking do. What? What is this? What am I gathering? I <laughs> oh, don't worry. You'll when the game, the full game comes out, you can keep your save and take all those jewels and spend them or whatever. Did you Probably. say the full game? Thinking yes, emoji. I did. Yes, I did. Huh. Well. <laughs> 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 you might not want to count your ducks before they hatch because <laughs> uh, for as successful as the Kickstarter was the actual development of the game has been uh, quite the roller coaster to put it lightly <laughs> so the game was expected to uh, ship in uh, October of 2017 so uh couple months handful of months after the kickstarter concluded so pretty ambitious but uh if there's a delay after that i can kind of forgive it you know probably developer's first game sure delays happen but uh when your delay uh turns into a year-long delay two year-long delay <laughs> i think that starts raising some eyebrows yeah for sure um that was really ambitious that date <laughs> and that and that's sort of the sort of thing you want to you want to push out as far as you can just based on how every single project game anything you name it uh, <laughs> tends to run late <laughs> are you familiar with the star citizen i am familiar with that what is the lore on that enlighten me well it had a Kickstarter. I don't even remember when. Many years ago at this point, pretty sure. I think it was like a spiritual successor to Wing Commander, an old PC game series <laughs> where you, you know, drive a spaceship and go on adventures. I don't even. I, don't, I never played any Wing Commander games, so I don't even know what it's about. But, uh -huh. but it was pretty ambitious. Uh, they wanted to do it on a very fancy modern engine like cry engine the crisis so. <laughs> what <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so it's it gonna be the most you know fidelitous kind of space game experience uh, that they could manage they got a whole bunch of money i want to say like 14 million or something like that on kickstarter 14 um, million oh my yeah fucking god uh remember if they had uh him at the, the time of the kickstarter but uh Mark Hamill was like a friend of the um, the main guy, the director of the game, uh, and mm -hmm. he's going to be like in the story campaign or something as one of the voice actors. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you like Star Wars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so where did it um, all go wrong? Well, so, I mean, it's, it's been, you know, it was meant to be delivered a long time ago it never came out they, they've added lots of lots and lots of things afterwards because um they received money after the kickstarter because they just they just had they opened their own like 
you know, site, and you can just you can buy in-game items uh, that are in the game that you can play with now, and you can play what what they have, and you can buy in-game ships and stuff for ridiculous amounts of money that aren't uh, implemented yet, it, um, which is pretty questionable. Um, you can buy spaceships that don't exist for. <laughs> large sums of money and I mean I think they're up to like over 200 million at this point um, people have way too much money and that sort of thing and you know I, I don't know the status of it now it's been a while since I followed it but mm -hmm. um, it's become a thing where it seems like it's really not gonna get finished anytime soon the feature creep is very strong and the game doesn't particularly like run well and a lot of features are missing so that's the uh the cliff's notes <laughs> that is bizarre <laughs> yeah for sure 284 million oh my it's not a 284 that's pretty yeah that's ridiculous though wow Okay, well, this game didn't garner that much money, but uh, <laughs> right, they did get a quite a pity, a pretty penny, pretty penny mm -hmm. for uh, their Kickstarter campaign, and uh, I don't know. It's just been delay after delay, and it's not without reason. Um, they've been quite transparent about the uh, the setbacks they've experienced. A lot of them owing to uh, life stuff, quote unquote. And so, you know, that sometimes can't be helped. I would I would think uh, the game they're trying to aim for could have been made in a, a year, but you know, what do I know? I'm not a super cool CEO wearing a graphic tee and a leather jacket at E3. <laughs> <laughs> But now we're in uh, 2020, and they're just adding uh, pretty rudimentary things that the game should have already had. But uh, what can you do, I guess? Quite a bit of the audience has lost faith in this game ever coming out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't knock them. But reading all of this made me think of the very genius idea that I told you mm -hmm. that... I don't know if Kickstarter themselves should do, or if some other third party should do it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking die, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a video game Kickstarter and you get in over your head or life throws you a curveball, you should be able to take your IP that you have and all the source code and assets and whatnot associated with it and put it up for auction so that other development studios can bid on it and take over the project and all of its IPs and licenses and stuff. So that, that removes the albatross around your neck, gives you a little money, and the game will eventually get made by some other studio. Maybe not to the T for the design the original creators put forth, but at least the game will get made in some capacity and the, the backers can get something for a... All of their money and time wasted. Yeah. Something would come out of it. Yeah, and that's not even talking about the uh, the people who <laughs> paid uh, very exorbitant amounts of money for uh, in-game items and real items and perler things and uh, keychains and USB sticks and all this other stuff. Right. God knows if they're ever going to get that, let alone the game. <laughs> Which is uh, always a shame to see, because it doesn't bode well for uh, video game Kickstarters in general. Kind of puts a bad taste in people's mouths. But they need to do my idea. My idea, bro. They got to do it. It's fucking genius. I have seen, I, I have seen um, projects where the game gets abandoned or, you know, whatever by one party and then they they hand it over to another party and then they you know have to deal with it um so that sort of thing does it does happen at least um mm -hmm. when, when the developers are 
are uh, self-aware and uh, you know mm-hmm. they they know the writings on the wall or whatever. They just they think it can't get done. I guess if they already do that, then the process should be streamlined and more uh, the transaction more easy, easily done. Well, I'm pretty sure Kickstarter right, right now Kickstarter doesn't like they're they're hands off with it. Like you know, whatever happens, it's between the the backers and the uh, the creator. So you know, if they hand it off to a different studio that's on them and you know either they sold it or they just gave it to them or whatever the deal was that's what it is okay so probably doesn't want to get their hands dirty you know it's going to be a lot of legal stuff to handle probably yeah i guess it would be tricky but i mean you gotta you could give people some kind of something to to make their make them feel more safe and when it comes to like parting with money for these projects yeah it just feels, you know, messed up that all these people were getting hyped about this game for years, and, uh... Well, I mean, I guess they do have this pretty fly demo, but <laughs> that's true, obviously true. not what they were looking for. No. Especially the people who backed it, expecting a PS Vita copy of the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somehow, that one seems like the most, uh... dead dream, you know, out of all of them. <laughs> Damn, thank god they didn't promise an Ouya version. Oh yeah. Oh shit, I did it. Nice. Yeah. Nice job. I don't know. I will th- they just need to... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating for sure, seeing these projects. But to uh, get into a sort of limbo. But on a positive note i mean like you said this this is really nice what they have so far and i mean this is far from you know the worst uh kickstarter failure i've ever seen like <laughs> yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a failure yet I, I didn't back it to be fair and so maybe i'm not the person to ask but uh what they have right now is really good and they're updating it like pretty recently you know so yeah that that's the funny thing that all said they are still slowly but surely uh updating it adding to it and uh yeah very slowly trudging towards uh final release yeah we can hope yeah it's just if they just had the help of like a small group of developers to just kind of bolster that then it could be released on a realistic time scale, but uh, somehow I don't think the thirty-five thousands uh, still left. It's probably been used from previous uh, development. Exactly, it got it got it got uh, burned real quick. I'm I'm fairly sure of that. Mm. Which is a shame because it's a pretty fly game. But uh, what can you do? I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it is what it is. I don't know, volunteer to help them out with the game? <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I guess it's gonna hurt, right? <laughs> Maybe, I don't, I don't know, just some... Uh... Well, unless you sabotage their code or something, <laughs> I guess it could hurt. <laughs> some renegade group of programmers and artists just fly in like yeah. the fucking A-team or some shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that'd be an interesting resolution to this whole story. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for now, it's still in development and working on that demo. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish it well, I guess. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would like to see this released. Uh, I'd probably pick it up if it was a reasonable price on Steam. Mm-hmm. Maybe not like handing over everything, but like reaching out to a publisher because mm-hmm. I did see that their Kickstarter had the. You know, you've kind of heard it before. Public, we don't want to go to publishers because they're they're kind of nasty and they make you do stuff you don't want to do, and they take a big portion of the profits. And you know that they does might... describe some publishers, but definitely not yeah. all of them. Yeah, yeah, they might compromise your artistic visions. The worry that I see a lot. Yeah, but then a lot of them do do end up going to publishers just because it's going to be the only way to finish the damn game. Yeah, plus, like, if they change your artistic vision, well, what's the the trade-off of that to have the game released in 10 years, but it's 
to the <laughs> T what you wanted. Well, I yeah. mean, yeah, it depends on what you're what you're going for. Some some developers, I'm sure, would would um just rather it not come out if if it's going to be like different than the way they want it to be. You know, they just say, "Well, forget it." You know, <laughs> but I think most people I would I would agree with you and say that they're yeah they're just they just want to get it out. Y'all need to take the L and just team up with a publisher. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That 35k L. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big L. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're you're a neophyte developer making your first game and it just you happen to strike gold, you don't know what you're doing. Can't knock them. Sure. But that is still uh, some almost a thousand people without a game and without all of their Perler uh, bead things and mm -hmm. <laughs> their yeah. in-game portraits of their dogs and stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. I did see the game got some super backers early on in the campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, I think donating some $800. I wonder how they feel about all this. <laughs> yeah, I'd be curious. Sunk cost fallacy? It'll come out eventually. <laughs> twenty twenty four. Look for it. E three twenty four. Bruh. <laughs> but um, yeah, that demo was actually excellent, given the <laughs> shit show that the Kickstarter is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Makes it all the more depressing that the Kickstarter was a shit show. Yeah, because they they actually have something to like show, but. I don't know. Maybe should have uh, asked for a hundred thousand. Do that. Do a second Kickstarter for the same game. Hundred grand this time. <laughs> God, that makes me think of my stupid idea of a stretch goal that's like a hundred grand, hundred twenty grand, and it's the contingent contingency stretch goal where if we reach it, the game will, without a doubt just come out it'll come out even if we die it's still gonna come out because we reached that stretch goal <laughs> there there's an idea for a dungeon drafters you do that you have the 200 grand stretch goal for uh -huh. absolute insurance release policy. <laughs> yeah that's that's it kickstarter insurance or game yeah. development insurance whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like a two-year delay, like, bro, are you Kingdom Hearts 3 or what? <laughs> like, I know it's like a, a full-fledged Castlevania game, but realistically, how long is this going to take? Yeah. But uh, pretty good. I give it a... Uh, I give it 35,000. <laughs> <laughs> and so did everyone else. <laughs> but yeah, what'd you think? Uh it really good, yeah. Um plays really solid and yeah, yeah, I I would totally pick it up on Steam if it was a a reasonable price. So yeah. I hope I would does come out. I probably would have backed it if I didn't know everything I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean um this looks like something I would consider backing at least. If I, if I don't about it. Yeah. Well, when I say back it, I mean back in that low tier game only yeah. or game and soundtrack. I'm not paying 500 bucks to have my cat pixelized and put as a portrait in the game. No, no, <laughs> it's, no. It's not yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, same, same here. 